Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my business science problem framework and we're gonna now go through that um, first. So this is really an important step. Um, a lot of times what data scientists do is they just kind of jump into analyzing data and trying to tackle a problem. But what's really important is, especially if you're working in large organizations where they have to be very careful on how they deploy the resources, uh, you wanna make sure that you're taking on the right projects. And this is gonna help you with that. So the business science problem framework has seven different stages. What we're gonna focus on first is this first stage called view the business as a machine. And there's three different steps in here. Isolate the business unit, define objectives, define the machine in terms of people and processes, and then collect the outcomes in terms of feedback. And those feedback are gonna identify problems. So that's what we're first gonna try and step through. Um, so uh, in terms of viewing the business as a machine and, and uh, really isolating those business units, uh, it's important to talk about this problem that, marketing, that the marketing department is having. So uh, we ask ourselves, which department is responsible for uh, the sales revenue? Um, it's the marketing department. So what they're responsible for is the sales emails. So we then start to talk about in step two, defining those objectives. Um, what they're what they're trying to do is they want people to convert to purchases and uh, they need to target those subscribers that are likely to purchase and they need to and they'd also likely uh, want to nurture certain subscribers especially if they're early on in their journey with this company to be able to take actions that are known to kind of get them closer so then what we would do is once we have that those objectives defined then define the system that is going to generate um, and map out the current system so this isn't the improved system yet but this is the system that market marketing is currently walking through and this is really key when you're talking with these businesses it's not you who needs to be the expert in their system but rather it's you who needs to get the right people involved in order to make sure you have the necessary information. So when we talk about defining the machine in terms of people and processes, this should be on marketing to actually define that machine. Um, and it's your responsibility to help kind of guide them through this process, but make sure that they're filling in the, the necessary details so you can do your job. Um, again, your, do your job is to analyze the information um, and develop a, uh, uh, an analytical solution but their job is to help you define what that system looks like and, and who's involved and, and uh, what, the, what the current system is. So uh, you talk with the marketing department and what they do is they tell you that marketing sends out email blasts to everyone. So this is kind of a dead giveaway that, hey, like, you know, you're probably sending out, if you're treating everyone the same, you know, that's probably not a good idea. Um, but a lot of marketing departments, you know, they don't have time and they don't have the resources to, to necessarily dive in and segment their lists. So um, what their goal is, is to generate sales and how this works is, that, is in this funneling process. Uh, they send an email blast to everyone um, and these email blasts sometimes contain sales emails, sometimes contain, you know, nurturing emails. But, um, you know, what ends up happening is it can tick some members off, especially if those members aren't warmed up to the product offering. Um, or if they're not a good fit uh, for the email list. Um, so you'll get a lot of unsubscribers if you just send out these email blasts to everyone. Uh, certain members unsubscribe, and this reduces the email growth and also the profitability because as you get more unsubscribers, you know, especially if they, maybe if they were nurtured a little bit more um, and maybe if the emails were contoured to them a little bit better, then they may have stuck around longer and a certain percentage would have potentially converted. So that has the outcome. And this is what you do in step three is you collect those outcomes. So we know, you know, uh, management has seen that revenue has slowed and they want to know what they can do about that in order to think a little more intelligently about how they're um, tackling you know, this, this, this kind of process that has, uh, has over time been great, but then has, has had some issues, uh, in more recent times with revenue slowing. So 
um, that's the end goal here is that we want to make sure that revenue increases uh, and email growth increases and the outcomes and the feedback that we're identifying is that, you know, it's the, the business is going the other direction and it's not uh, as performant as it was in the past. Okay, so we've just kind of talked about at a high level, you know, isolating the business units. We know that that's marketing, um, defining the objectives, understanding, you know, what the goal is of this process, then understanding that process a little bit more by defining the machine in terms of the people and the processes involved, um, getting the right team involved, and then collecting those outcomes uh, and seeing, you know, what the results have been um, in terms of feedback, positive or negative. Uh, and we can see here that revenue has slowed and email growth has also slowed.